you and the rest of your brothers and sisters have made your parents proud. Tonight, Lauren, you look very, very beautiful. I'm still your dad, and the little bit I know about Juan, you're grounded. <laughs> The greatest blessing that she can give to a man in this world is a wonderful wife. That she is his greatest blessing. And that's why the blessing that Jerish bestows today really is so directed to the wife because it is directed to the wife through the husband. Because so must you always bear in mind the fact that you are God's greatest blessing to each other. Always thank you for that. Lauren, you know that she's just a burst of sunshine. She's always going to bring the fun. And some of my best memories are with Lauren competing on the swim team, hanging out with our swim team friends. Where's, where's Malls at? She knows where I'm talking about. Um, but the sleepovers, the dance shows, uh, makeovers, just crushing sledding hills, whitewater rafting. I was just so happy to have my sister be part of those experiences, which were literally the best of times. And it's even cooler now that as adults, we get to relive those memories together. My dear friends in Christ, as you know, you are about to enter a union. Which is most sacred and most serious. A union which was established by God himself. Where are you going? You look great. Where are you headed? But Christ our Lord added to the holiness of marriage an even deeper meaning and a higher beauty. He referred to the love of marriage to describe his own love for his church. And so he gave to Christians a new vision of what married life ought to be. A life of self-sacrificing love like his own love. It is for this reason that his apostle, St. Paul, clearly states that marriage is now and for all time to be considered a great mystery. This union, then, is most serious because it will bind you together for life in a relationship so close and so intimate that it will profoundly influence your whole future.
The future with its hopes and its disappointments, its successes and its failures, its pleasures and its pains, its joys and its sorrows, that future is now hidden from your eyes. You know that these elements are to be mingled in every life and must be expected in your own lives as well. And so not knowing what is before you, you take each other for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health until death. Truly then, these words of your marriage vows are most serious. It is a beautiful tribute to your undoubtedly doubted confidence in each other that recognizing their full import you are nevertheless so willing and so ready to pronounce them and because these words involve such solemn obligations it is most fitting that you rest the security of your married life upon the great principle of self-sacrifice and so you begin your married life by the voluntary and complete surrender of your individual lives in the interest of that deeper and wider life that you will now have in common. Henceforth, you belong entirely to each other, even as you belong to Jesus Christ our Lord. You will be one in mind, one in heart, one in affections. And whatever sacrifices you may hereafter be required to make to preserve this common life, always make those sacrifices generously. Sacrifice is usually difficult and irksome. Only love can make it easy, and perfect love makes it joyful. We are willing to give to the extent that we love. And when love is perfect, the sacrifice is complete. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And the Son of God so loved us that he gave himself for our salvation. Greater love than this no one has, that he laid down his life for his beloved. There are going to be two times when I stop the Mass, just as I would for the ceremony of ordaining a priest or a deacon. But this is to give a nuptial blessing. And if you follow the text of the nuptial blessing, it seems as though the nuptial blessing is directed to the bride, almost exclusively. Is it true? Well, no, both the husband and the wife are blessed in the nuptial blessing that will come to you from the altar today. But the church regards the greatest blessing that she can give to a man in this world is a wonderful wife. That she is his greatest blessing. And that's why the blessing that the church bestows today really is so directed to the wife because it is directed to the wife through the husband. Because so much you always Bear in mind the fact that you are God's greatest blessing to each other. Always thank you for that. With that, I ask you the following questions, and Juan, I direct this to you. Juan, do you take Lauren here present for your lawful wife according to the right of our Holy Mother, the Church? I will. Lauren, do you take Juan, here present for your lawful husband, according to the right of our Holy Mother of the Church. I will. I, Juan Pablo Suarez Baron. I, Juan Pablo Suarez Baron. Take you, Lauren Elise Bezier. Take you, Lauren Elise Bezier. For my lawful wife. For my lawful wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better or worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer or poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. And Lauren, please repeat it to me. I, Lauren Elise Bezier. I, Lauren Elise Bezier. Take you, Juan Pablo Suarez Baron. Take you, Juan Pablo Suarez Baron. For my lawful husband. For my lawful husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. And please kneel down.
One of my grandchildren, I won't say who, once said to me, I kind of understand, Grandpa, what love is. I love my brothers and sisters and mom and dad, and I know mom and dad love each other too, but what is true love? Okay, I'll, I wasn't gonna, I'll tell you who it was who asked me. It was Marcello. So I said, Marcello, first of all, true love is not necessarily the most bestest love of all. It is not perfect love because that is God's love. It is divine love. For a married couple, they would come close to perfect love if within minutes of each other, they go to heaven together in the same nursing home, holding hands with their faces down in their pudding. Chocolate pudding, Marcello. Chocolate pudding with sprinkles. And I continued, I said, Marcello, there are lots of different kinds of love. A person can love lots of things. My, your uncle Greg and Kevin love chicken pot pie. And I know you love pizza and tacos and ice cream, Marcello. And there are people who love golf. In fact, there are some people who love golf even if they're not good at it, like your dad. And there's love at first sight. It was that way for Grand when she first met me. I once asked Grand if her life would have been different if she had never met me. She didn't really say very much, but she smiled. And then she laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> and then there's a mother's love. That's one of the best. It's a very special kind of love. Moms love their kids so much. In fact, if you and your dad were stuck on a train track and a train was coming and your mom could only push one of you out of the way in time, your dad would be mush. <laughs> love is really great. You feel better for the smile on the other person's face. Love is also when you feel the main reason God puts you on this earth was to make that person happy. But especially that you could know all the less than perfect things about someone and never ever stop loving them. That, that Marcello is what really true love is about. Never stop loving them. True love may, may not be the best love, but it never quits, it endures. That idea has been expressed elsewhere. In the book and movie Princess Bride, Wesley told Princess Buttercup, true love does not happen every day. Even death cannot destroy true love. It can only delay it for a while. And there's a song that I've always loved titled After All, written in the 80s by Cher and Peter Cetera. And the lines that I like from that, that song are, when love is truly right, it lives from year to year. Along the way it grows, though it changes as it goes, but it never disappears. And God says it even better. We heard it today. For better or worse, for rich or poor, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. So, Marcello, true love is measured by time. Only time will tell you if it is so. Lorne and Juan, you spend one, you spend, spent one happy day getting married and the rest of your life being glad that you did, hopefully. Grow old together, and in the end, with your faces smacked down in the pudding, know that you have experienced true love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Take and wear this ring. Take and wear this ring. As a sign of our marriage vows. As a sign of our marriage vows. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. <clears throat> and I plight unto thee my troth. And I plight unto thee my troth. And Lauren, do the same thing, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Take and wear this ring. Take and wear this ring. As a sign of our marriage vows. As a sign of our marriage vows. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring, with this ring I thee wed. And I plight unto thee my truth. And I plight unto thee my truth. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of 
Confirmo hoc Deus, cura operator ses in nobis, et templo sancto tuo, cura est in nobis. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Please pray the Our Father together. Pater nostre. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our day, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us now into temptation, deliver us from evil. Amen. Et nenos inducas in tentatione. Salvos fac servos tuos, Deus meus perantes in te. Mita eis domini auxilium de sancto, et de suum sion tu ere eos. Esto eis domine torres fortitivis, apaci et amici, domini exaurirationa mea. Et clamra meus a te veniat, Dominus Sebisco. Oremus resplice quesimus Domine superos famulus tuos. Et institutis tuis quibus norigationem humani generis ordinasti, beninius assiste ut qui te auctorium guntur, te auxiliante serventur. Pe Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. May Almighty God bless you by the word of his mouth and unite your hearts in the enduring bond of pure love. Amen. 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 May you be blessed in your children, and may the love that you lavish on them be returned a hundredfold. Amen. 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 May the peace of Christ dwell always in your hearts and in your home. May you have true friends to stand by you, both in joy and in sorrow. May you be ready with help and consolation for all those who come to you in need. And may the blessings promised to the compassionate descent in abundance in your home. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your work and enjoy its fruits. May cares never cause you distress, nor the desire for earthly possessions lead you astray. But may your heart's concern be always for the treasures laid up for you in the life of heaven, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. May the Lord grant you fullness of years so that you may reap the harvest of a good life. And after you have served him with loyalty here in his kingdom on earth, may he take you up into his eternal dominions in heaven where you can rejoice with him together. Through our Lord Jesus Christ and his, his Son, who livest and reignest with him in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God forever and ever. Amen. One, Lord, and go in peace, and may our Lord always be with you. Amen. Amen. Just because you're married now, Juan, your life does not have to come to an end. Have some goals. Have some goals for your life and your marriage, of course, your career. Continue to do well at your job. CrossFit, stay in shape. Travel if you wish, see the world. And four, maybe try to acquire a passing understanding of women, but realize that all the goals are not very obtainable. Remember that, it, and this is crucial, the moment you believe you know what a woman is thinking, that's the moment your goose is cooked. So, Lauren and Juan, to become Juan. I had to say it again. I just so that it's so lame. The best of your married life won't be the big events but the little ones that get all added up together. Your marriage should not be measured in endless days and weeks, but special moments and years. Value your marriage, devote yourselves to one another, strive to be each other's one best friend. A married couple may be the smallest of teams, but it's the most important team in the world because it stands to provide the patience, serenity, and endurance this world demands. To my wife, Donna, you've truly given me um, a family of which to be proud and a home full of love. I hope in some way I've enriched your life. Regardless, you have given, given a meaning to my life that I did not imagine or deserve. I believe a, success, a successful marriage demands, above all, two important elements, faith and family. Stay close to God. God and family will be your safe spot, your, your security, and your sanctuary. 
And just because I've brought up family, I, I really want to indulge me. I, I want to um, talk a little bit about my son who couldn't be here. <laughs> um, my son Greg, his wife Kelly, and their beautiful daughters, Audrey, Penny, and Jane, they couldn't be with us this weekend. As most of you are probably aware, Jane was born in July with a heart problem. Just one week ago, they were able to bring her home. And again, they're finally together as a family. It's still a tough, tough, tough road ahead of them, but I'm sure they will do well. And when they left the hospital, this is a note one of, their, one of Jane's nurses wrote. She said, Bizarre fam, I am so excited that the day has finally come for you to take sweet Jane home. Your family has been such a joy to care for. One day I hope to be as wonderful a parent as both of you. It has been a blessing to know your family through the your time here. I'm praying for each of you and that Jane keeps up with her recovery and gets big and strong. I admire your perseverance and care for one another. I'm sure your girls are going to be over the moon to have their whole family back together. Jane is very loved, signed Nurse Emma. And there are, there are many, many of you here who offered Greg and Kelly so much assistance and mostly your prayers, and I am appreciative of that. Donna and I want to thank you so much um, for all that you've done to try to help them through this. I remember the most 
or when you were little in Oklahoma, eating dinner, we used to call you Bougie, and I have no idea why. <laughs> but we called you Bougie for a long time. I don't know where it came from. I remember sitting at the dinner table. These are my earliest recollections of you. And you'd be at the other end, and your sister's on this side, and mom on this side. And you would used to fill your cheeks up with food. And I thought, oh, she's afraid Kristen and Megan are going to get all the food. So I started calling you Bougie. And Uncle Kurt said he still likes to call you Bougie. But over time, your name has changed. I call you Lore, but people call you Lore Lore. I think mom does. L Train, that was penned by, I think, Kevin. And Auntie Lorlin, all your nieces and nephews. I remember coming home from work uh, at Fort Sill, and everybody in Oklahoma has wooden fences around their backyards with little gaps in the fences. And I would drive into the driveway, and there'd be Megan, Kristen, and your little faces staring through the cracks. <laughs> so neat. And. Uh, We'd have dinner with mom, and then in the evening, you'd want to play with me, but I was so tired, I invented this game called Paralyzed Bear. And I would just lay on the living room floor, and if they got close to me, I'd growl and grab them. And Kristen and Megan were a little older, they were pretty quick, but I could get a hold of you. And I'd hold you hostage until Kristen and Megan got close enough. <laughs> and then, of course, there were the Disney movies, which were over and over and over again. The one that I remember the most is Sleeping Beauty because the three fairy godmothers were Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. And Kristen and Megan always took times, t turns being Flora and Fauna, but you always had to be that little blue Meriwether and it just used to drive you crazy. <laughs> so after Oklahoma, um, then we my memory fades a little bit. We had five kids, work and things like that. But I, I remember your life was pretty much the bad years, the better years, and the proud years. The bad years, I heard stories about you climbing on window ledges, walking on in wet cement with your brothers, and rummaging through your grandmother's purse from time to time, looking for I don't know what. The better years, you got a little older, softball, swim, track, and especially you were so good at cross country. proud years. Watch you become a faithful, thoughtful, kind woman and a most loved coach. You and the rest of your brothers and sisters have made your parents proud. Tonight, Lauren, you look very, very beautiful. And I'm still, and I'm, I'm still your dad, and the little bit I know about Juan, you're grounded. <laughs> I'll tell you though, I don't know Juan that well, but some things I've noticed about him over the last few years, he is truly a hard worker. He's very dedicated. He's become quite the grill master. He has a funny fascination for white-tailed deer, cars and trucks, and keeping them clean. And for some reason, he's, he has a strong desire to want to drive my riding lawnmower. And oh, by the way, he keeps a very, very, very tidy kitchen. But Kevin and Kate wanted me to say they thought this was so funny. Uh, for, <laughs> that one day, Lauren, you would find the right one. I mean, so lame. OK, but I said it. OK, Kevin, Kate, I said it. One story, Lauren spent the summer with us and Juan came up a couple of times, especially the last week before Lauren was gonna go back to Florida. And uh, I was at work, had a long day, come in, came in the house about six o'clock in the afternoon. And in the kitchen were Donna and Lauren and Juan. And Juan had on a pair of tight, tight pink girls workout pants. And I, at first thing, I did not say anything, but I thought there's still time to bail. <laughs> Turns out the boy has poor circulation. He does not like a cold house. We keep our house pretty cold. And uh, he didn't bring any pants up, so he was wearing, wearing Lauren's workout pants. So uh, that gave me a, a slight modicum of relief. But one, so I'm just going to try to give you some advice about marriage because I am... I don't know, I, you might call me an expert on this, but... <laughs> 
I once heard it said one, if you ever meet a girl who is too good for you, marry her. You and I did the right thing, buddy. <laughs> Second, do you, know the mo do you know the most important three little words that make a marriage work? Do you know them? You don't know. How about, kiss me now? How about, I love you? Nope, nope, sorry buddy. They are, yes you will, no you won't, and in your case, no way Jose. And then also, this is important. You must remember this. Always remember, happy wife, happy life. In your lingo, it would be sound like esposa contenta, vida muy bueno. Yeah. Um, so if, if for anyone who doesn't know me, I am Kristen. I am one of Lauren's older sisters. Um, to give you a little bit of a con context for our, the Bizarre family, we have five siblings. There's three girls, Megan, then me, then Lauren, um, followed by two boys, Greg and Kevin, and we're all spaced about two years apart. Um, so for anybody who didn't, that you weren't lucky enough to grow up in a family with lots of siblings that are, are spaced close together, yes, you do have these built-in playmates, friends, but it is definitely survival of the fittest. Um, and there most certainly is a hierarchy where your status is determined by things like speed and wit and your ability to make up cool games. But like any kid knows, the biggest factor is age. So unfortunately for Ma uh, Lauren, I almost called you Marin because I looked at her. Unfortunately for Lauren, um, this meant that she was the bottom of the sister totem pole. Um, and she had to do what we said. It just, that's how it was. And when we, we were, especially in the imaginary play, and kind of my dad alluded to it, things like Sleeping Beauty. Congratulations, Lauren, you get to be the blue fairy. Hocus Pocus, you want to be Sarah? No way, you're Mary. Three Ninjas, Lauren was 100% our Tum Tum. And as a side note, for anyone who gets the Three Ninjas reference, you are in the fold. And if you don't know it, seriously add it to your watch list and, and buckle up because you're in for a real treat. So obviously because Laura and I were so close in age, we were in a lot of the same activities together, softball team, swim team, theater group. And Lauren just had to come try to hang out with me and my friends instead of hanging out with the younger kids. I literally had this like little white haired, big glasses girl as my shadow to the point where I kid you not, I was 12 years old going on my very first date and somehow Lauren convinced my mom to allow her to be dropped off at the ice skating rink. I mean, do you know how hard it is to try to ha hold your boyfriend's hand when you got this little girl kind of like skating up and just trying to chat with you both. I mean, it was literally the most embarrassing thing ever. Back in those days, I found myself regularly having to tell my friends, Ugh, that's my sister Lauren, ignore her. Well, as years went by, Either I matured or the School of Hard Knocks allowed Lauren to blossom into a cooler version of herself. I, I like to think it was the latter, but it was probably the former. Um, but anyway, I started to be very happy to have her hanging out in my friend circle. For everybody that knows Lauren, you know that she's just a burst of sunshine. She's always going to bring the fun. And I have to be honest, the, some of my best memories are with Lauren competing on the swim team, hanging out with our swim team friends, where's, where's Malls at, she knows where I'm talking about, um, but the sleepovers, the dance shows, uh, makeovers, just crushing sledding hills, whitewater rafting. I was just so happy to have my sister be part of those experiences, which were literally the best of times. And it's even cooler now that as adults, we get to relive those memories together. 
Lauren also, outside of being a great friend, is also an extremely talented individual. In high school, she competed at the varsity level, like my dad said, swimming, track, cross country, and was a 12-time letter winner. Um, and then after graduating, she's cultivated a lot of prof professional cer um, certifications and things like CrossFit, personal training, massage therapy, nutrition, cosmetology. And I actually think it's really interesting. I think these are all so fitting for Lauren because everything that she has pursued is to help others better themselves. And I just think that's so Lauren. She's always looking to try to help people to be the best versions of themselves. But most importantly, Lauren is wholly dedicated to her friends, her family, and her faith. Every day she strives to bring beauty, truth, and goodness to the world. So as I grew into present day, I still find myself saying that same line to my friends, although now it's with awe and admiration. Hey guys, yeah, that's my sister Lauren. Isn't she amazing? If you don't already know who I am, my name is Jorge, or as my friends call me, JJ, and I'm the best man. So for those of you who don't know the story by now, I met Juan sometime back in 2008 in a college class, computer class, but we never actually spoke more than a few words. And a few, year, few years went by, somewhere around 2011, we re reconnected. Um, I was hired at a company, a Belkin, where he was actually working at. But if you were to ask him when we first met, he might actually say, I don't know, because he never remembers anything. Or he might give you the wrong answer. He might say, 2014. In his head, that's when it probably happened because that's when I first joined CrossFit. A lot of you may have noticed that when you first met Juan, he's rather shy and he, he may not even care to listen to you unless you pique a certain interest in his. He doesn't open up to you until you say the four magic words, do you even lift? In all seriousness, Juan is a good man. He's the hardest working dude I know. He's loyal and supportive. Calling Juan my best friend would not do it justice. He's been like a big brother to me, or how he likes to think of it, he's like my second dad. <laughs> but enough about Juan, this wedding day is really about the bride, Lauren. Give it up, give it up. I'd like to tell you a story of how Juan and I met Lauren. <laughs> One random afternoon, Lauren and a friend of hers decided to drop by our CrossFit gym and signed up for the same workout class that Juan and I were about to do. Juan immediately made a side comment to me about how beautiful this new person was and how vibrant her purple hair was. Does, it, does anyone remember her purple hair? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I think what really sold Juan and Lauren may have actually been, uh, she performed really well in that class, so well that I think she may have beaten Juan's score. <laughs> Which is no easy task, by the way. I don't know if you've ever done a workout with Juan. <clears throat> uh, Lauren, I apologize. I don't remember all the details here. I, was, I actually was kind of preoccupied with the fact that your friend stole my pull-up station when in the middle of the workout, I couldn't actually do the workout the way I planned it. I, I told you I wouldn't let it go. I told you that. As uh, time went on, Juan mustered up the courage to ask Lauren on a few dates, one of them even being a trip to Colombia. He put his salsa dancing skills to work, and the rest, as you know, is history. Lauren, I don't blame you for falling for that trick. Those hips don't lie. And now, them being together for some time, their common qualities shine brighter. Their shared love of dancing, traveling, CrossFit, and each other marks only the beginning of what I know will be a lifelong love affair. If you haven't had a chance to spend time with Juan and Lauren, I really recommend it. I've been talking a little too long here, and I'd like to wrap it up. I'd like to thank you all for being a part of this wonderful moment in Juan and Lauren's lives. I'd also like to thank you all for your attention and to begin this quote, or this toast, sorry, I found a quote, something that quickly sums up 
the institution of marriage, and also applies to what I believe I know of Juan and Lauren. Here it goes. Marriage is an alliance of two people, one of whom never remembers birthdays and the other who never forgets. I'll leave you to figure out who is who in there. Uh, before we make the actual toast, uh, please reach out to your local Don Julio mini bottle and pour yourselves a shot in the glass that's provided to you on your table. So before we start this, I'm going to actually say the cheers in Spanish, and I would, you, I would like all of you to repeat after me. Para arriba, para abajo, para el centro, y para adentro. With, with such talent and beauty and personality, we knew that whoever Lauren ended up with was going to be a catch, and we were not wrong. Enter Juan. Yeah, give it up, give it up. Um, I do, I have to be honest, I'm, I'm still getting to know Juan. He's a little bit of a hard nut to, to crack, but I will tell you what I know thus far. I thought I was OCD about cleaning. Juan takes it to a new level. I've never seen a kitchen gleam like his. Just like hashtag goals for me. He's got a really, really sweet truck, and I'm not even into cars, and even I was like, wow, this is cool. He did make me sit on a towel, though, when I drove in it. I don't know what that's supposed to be about. Um, he's also very fit. Asked my husband about the workout run they went on one time um, that turned into a battle, but he's, he's very fit. He almost never wears a shirt. and. I don't know if it's because he's trying to show off his bod or if it's because his thermostat's always set at 85 degrees. Jury's still out, but, but we'll, we're gonna figure it out. Um, but on a more serious note, it's clear that Juan is an incredibly hard worker and he takes a lot of pride in his work, his home, his personal development. And I know that that mentality spills over into, into how he looks at his relationship and, and treats his relationship with Lauren. So I speak on behalf of our whole crew in saying that we are so happy to welcome you to our family today. Uh, just one little tip, and Thomas, Mark, my dad will tell you that this is true. The Bazaar women are almost never wrong. So if you are in any type of disagreement, just play the odds and assume Lauren is right. All right, so wrapping up here. In prepping for this speech, I asked the bride and the groom three questions, and I want to share their answers with you. So the first question was, what was it that first attracted you to the other person? Juan said, the most beautiful eyes this brown man has ever seen. It's the truth, right? Um, and Lauren said, for the first 10 months, nothing. Uh, Juan, I feel your pain. Thomas put me through the same misery, but way to stay strong. Um, but then she did say that eventually she saw, saw the light and what it was, was his depth of commitment, determination, and dedication that won her over. Question two, what is one word you use to describe the other? Lauren to Juan said that he's outrageous. She explained that everything he does is extreme, crazy, loco, loco Juan for life. And all I need to say is I need stories. I've known Juan to be pretty reserved, so someone's got to spill the dirt to me tonight. There's going to be some tequila going around, so let me know these stories. Um, moving on, but so what Juan said about Lauren is she's uncompromising. And to provide context, I think Lauren is morally incorruptible, which I profoundly love, admire, and try to embrace in my own life. And the final question, um, what about the other makes you love them and want to spend your life with them? Lauren said, Juan is truly the very best person I have ever met. His heart knows no bounds. His generosity is endless. His unwavering commitment, drive, and of course, his forever loco -ness. Juan said, pull out the tissues. Lauren has made me better in so many ways. 
She has shown me that there are still people in this world for whom faith, principles, values, and unconditional love for family and friends is non-negotiable. Lauren is the kindest, most loving, and most caring person I've ever known. She has taught me what the meaning of being selfless, thoughtful, and charitable is, not with her words, but with her actions. I want to marry Lauren because I look up to Lauren. I admire her. I want to be just as I want to be as kind, just, and loving as she is. She is the love of my life and the very best human I have ever known. So to <laughs> to close, I might not have as much marriage experience as my father, but I will give you a little. Look at each other. Take a picture in your mind of this moment. When times get hard, when you feel like you're stuck in the humdrum of domestic life, Juan, when you start to develop a twitch because the kids are leaving crumbs on the floors and fingerprints everywhere and, dare I say, a glass on the countertop, Pull out that photo from your mind and conjure up the feelings you have right now. Hang on to this love drunk feeling where nothing would make you happier in this world than to commit your lives to one another today in front of your friends and family. So if you will, grab your glass. Please raise it to the beautiful bride and the handsome groom. And join me in wishing them an abundance of blessings on their marriage many, many happy years, and in true Bazaar fashion, lots of babies. and honored to announce to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Juan Pablo Suarez Barro. You were everything I never knew I needed, is what you are to me. It's no secret that I was the one who refused to give you and us the chance for 10 whole months. I remember telling you after I told you for the millionth, trillionth time, we will never do it. You simply, calmly, and confidently replied, one of us is going to be wrong, and it won't be me. And for the first and only time, you are right. 